Alright, welcome to another video on shear force and bending moment diagrams and in this video we're going to be looking at a simple cantilever problem. So essentially we have two forces acting on it. One is 2 kilonewtons, the other one is 3 kilonewtons. And what we're going to do is we're going to first of all find the reaction forces on it. So we have fixed support on a wall here, which means that if we draw the free body diagram, so let me just do this one over here, we're going to have this force acting here, and then this one over here. Then we have the wall, but of course we want to replace that by some reaction forces. So in this case, let's call this point O. So that would be ROX, sorry, ROY. Then we have a horizontal force, which is in this case the reaction is going to be zero because there are no horizontal external forces on this system. And we also have some bending moments. So in this case, let's assume the bending moment is going in that direction. So that's going to be bending moment at point O. So those are all the reactions we have at that support. Now the next thing is, okay, so we have this force is acting at some distance, so that's going to be 1 meter. And then the next one is going to be at 2 meters. So let's do the sum of the forces in the y direction first. Okay, so now we have that. The sum of the forces in the y direction, that's going to be as follows. We have 0 equals to ROY minus 2 minus 3. So immediately we know that our OY is going to be equal to 5 kilonewtons. And then we do the sum of the moments about point O. And let's assume this direction is positive. So we have that equal to 0. And then we have these two forces. So the first one we have is this one, which is the force acting at that single point. And then we're going to have this one over here. So that's 1 meter times 2. So that's minus 2. And then this one over here is 3 times 3, so that's the total distance, so minus 9. So that means that MO is going to be equal to 11 kilonewtons meters. So now what we can do with that is we can start drawing our shear force and bending moment diagrams. So as I did before, I'm going to draw them right below the free body diagram because I feel like that way is a little bit neater and you can usually tell whether you're doing it correctly. So we're going to draw a shear force on the y-axis, that's going to be in kilonewtons, and then the distance x in meters. And we're going to start at zero. So now we're going to do the same, we only have point loads, which means we're going to have constant uniform shear distributions throughout each of these sections. So to start with, we're going to have this force, which is telling us to go up by 5 kilonewtons. So we're going to go all the way to 5. Then it's going to remain constant until we get to 1 meter. So we're going to go like this. And then we're going to go down by 2. So we're going to go down a little bit. So this is going to be at 3. And then we're going to keep that constant for the next 2 meters and then go down by 3 again. So in this case, we notice we have two areas. So we have this little rectangle over here and this rectangle over there. So now what we notice is that we started at zero and then we come back to zero. And a general rule of thumb is that with these diagrams, you always want to do that with both of them, shear force and bending moment. You always want to, well, bending moment can be a little bit different, but usually you want them to come back to zero at some point because it doesn't make sense to have something lying around here because it wouldn't be an at equilibrium in that case. So. In this case, we have a shear force diagram that looks like this. So both of these areas, let me just split it up here, are positive. Okay. The bending moment diagram, in the other hand, it should come back to zero at the end. So we're going to see whether that's indeed correct. So we start at zero and we finish at zero. So bending moment in kilonewtons meters. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the same method that we used before. We just calculate the area underneath this section here. So that's going to be all the way to 1. But before we do that, we notice, okay, hang on. There is a bending moment reaction right at the point here, which is the support. Shouldn't we take that into account? Well, indeed, yes, we need to take that into account. So we actually need to place this into the equation. Now, normally with the bending moment, it is a little bit tricky. 
And in this case, we can assume that the bending moment is going to be negative. So basically, if it is going anti-clockwise, we usually assume that to be negative. So that means it is going to start off at minus 11. So essentially, we're at zero. There's a bending moment of 11 kilonewtons meters at the very fi uh, at the fixed support. So we go down by minus 11. So that's a constant bending moment. So we just go straight down. And then after that, what we're going to have is these two areas. So the first area over here, which is going to turn into a straight line, because remember that the bending moment is just the in the integral of the shear force. We're just going to grab this area, which is 5, and then we're going to add it to it. So it's a positive area, so we're going to have a upwards slope. So in this case, we have an area of 5, so we're going to go up by 5 between 0 and 1. So that means we're going to end up at minus 6 over here. And then after that, what we're going to have is we notice this second area over here is going to have an area of 2, so 3 minus 1 is 2, so that's the width of this rectangle over here, and it has a total height of 3, so that's going to be 6, and it is also going to go up. So basically, by the time we get here, we're going to go back to 0. So it's going to look something like that, and essentially this is going to be our bending moment diagram for this particular structure. We just have two straight lines going off like that. And the important thing with these two diagrams is that at the very end, they should always come back to zero, otherwise your structure would not be in equilibrium and it would actually be in motion. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can analyze systems involving distributed loads and other more complicated functions.